Welcome to Dive Into IntelliJ IDEA. This video is for use with our books, Java How to Program 10th Edition and Java SE8 for Programmers 3rd Edition, which is a subset of Java How to Program, as well as our Java Fundamentals Live Lessons videos. In this video, we'll discuss where to get the free IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition IDE, how to tell the IDE to display line numbers, and also how to configure tabs for use in your source code, how to create a new Java application project, how to add existing source code files to a project so that you can test our examples, and finally, how to create completely new source code files so that you can create your own Java applications from scratch. If you have any questions after watching this video, please feel free to contact me at the email address you see here and also on our Facebook or Google Plus pages. Before you can install IntelliJ, you're going to need to install the Java Development Kit. Now you can get the Java Development Kit from the website you see here on the screen. And when you go to this page and scroll down just a bit here, you'll see that there is the section called Java Platform Standard Edition, and you'll want to download the JDK onto your system and install it. Please be sure to follow the installation instructions carefully for whatever platform you have. So once you click this download button, you'll be taken to this page where you'll have to accept the license agreement before you'll be able to download. Then once you do, you can go ahead and download a version of the JDK for whatever operating system you're running on your computer. And if it's a Linux or a Windows system, you're going to want to know whether it's a 32-bit or 64-bit version. The x86 versions are for 32-bit Linux and 32-bit Windows respectively. The x64 versions are for 64-bit versions of the operating systems. Now, once you've downloaded the installer, you'll want to run the installer and again, follow those installation instructions back on the preceding page here for whatever platform you're using. Now, after you've done that, you can go to the IntelliJ IDEA website at jetbrains.com IDEA, and you'll see here that there's a download link. And when you click the download link, you'll see that there's tabs for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So obviously, you'll use whichever tab is appropriate for your operating system. And the free version is the so-called Community Edition. So you'll want to click the Download Community button for your particular operating system. It will then download the installer for you. Once that installer completes execution, or download rather, you'll then want to execute it so that you can install the IDE on your system. And again, IntelliJ has its own set of installation instructions as well, so you'll just want to follow along what it tells you to do on the screen. In Windows and Linux, you'll have a little wizard that you walk through, and on Mac OS, you'll simply have to drag the app into your applications folder. Now, once you do have it installed, you can go ahead and launch the IDE. On Windows, you'll find that under All Programs, then JetBrains and IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition, which I'm going to go ahead and launch right now. On Linux, you'll have a similar icon that you can select to launch it. And in Mac OS, you'll go into the Applications folder to find your IntelliJ icon and double click it to launch the IDE. Now, when you first launch the IDE, you'll be presented with the window you now see on the screen in which you can do things like create a new project, import an existing project, open um, an existing project, and some other options here as well, such as documentation and how-tos that will help you learn about the IDE. Now, one of the things you need to do is configure the IDE to display line numbers and also to use the same tab settings that we use in our source code. That is, if you want your source code to match up precisely with ours. So for that, you're going to click the Configure option, and you're going to go into the Settings. And once you do that, you'll be presented with this Settings window in which you can control all sorts of different settings for the IDE. 
Now under code style and general, if that's not already selected, go ahead and select head, go ahead and select it. You'll see tab size and indent are set to four and four respectively and the continuation indent is set to eight. For our code, we use three uh, for each of these. So if you wanna match up with our code, you'll go ahead and set each of these to three and then click apply. And the other thing that we uh, want to do is tell the IDE to show line numbers. So if you uh, search up here for line numbers, uh, you'll see that you get a number of different options that it's filtering down to. And under appearance, there is an option called show line numbers. So under editor appearance, show line numbers, you want to check that off and again, click apply and then click OK to dismiss that dialog. Once you're done with that, you can click the back arrow here to return to the quick start page in this initial dialog. And now you're ready to go ahead and create a project. So now let's take a look at how to test an existing program by importing source code into a project. To do that, we'll click the import project link and when you see this dialog, uh, initially it's probably going to look like this on Windows user systems and on other systems it'll look similar, but it will show you your uh, local directory structure. And what you'll need to do is navigate to the actual source code that you want to test. So for example, on my Windows system here, I have the examples for our book, Java How to Program 10th Edition, located in my C Drive's examples folder. And within the CH02 folder, I have a program in the figure 21 directory. If I expand that, you can see the files that are there, but you just select the folder that contains the source code files and click OK. At this point, you want to leave selected create project from existing sources and click next. And you can simply go ahead and click next continuously until you reach the screen that uh, shows the SDK. If an SDK is not selected, then you're going to have to specify where to find the Java development kit on your system. In this case, you can click this ellipsis button over at the far right side. And when you do that, you'll then have to navigate on your system to wherever the JDK is installed. If you're on a Windows system, it will be in either your program files or program files x86 folder. And on my system, it happens to be in program files under Java. And here's the JDK. So you'd select that, click OK, and then you would have your um, JDK selected that will be used for the purpose of compiling and running your programs. At this point, you click Next once again and click Finish, and it will go ahead and create a project with the name you specified, and it will create that project using the folder that you selected originally. And within that project will be the source code for the um, uh, .java files that were in that folder. So if I go ahead and uh, open this up here you can see that it comes in with some of the code compressed you can just click these icons here to open and close chunks of code within your java source code files so at this point we've imported a single source file program into the ide and if you want to run the program you can go to the run menu here and select run it's going to ask you what the name of the class is that contains the main method. So we'll select that. And at this point, it's going to now build the application and execute it. And you can see welcome to Java programming being displayed on in the output window at the bottom of the screen here. So that is how you would go about creating a new project from existing source code. Now, you can do that for each new project that you want to create. Once you're in a project, you can go to the file menu to do the import option if you would like. Uh, anytime you first open the IDE and you don't select a project, you'll be presented with the other window where we selected import project previously. Now, if you want to create a new project from scratch, you're going to use the new project option for that. Before we create a new project from scratch, let's import a project that has multiple Java source code files. 
So again, from the file menu, you can select now import project. And when you do, you can then navigate to a folder that contains a multi-source file program. So for us, that would be in chapter three, where our first multi-source file programs are. And I'll select the folder for the first figure in chapter three. So let me go ahead and click OK on that. And just like before, leave create project from existing sources selected and keep clicking next until you get to the finish button. Then click finish to import the code into the IDE as a new project. Now, if you want to have multiple projects open at the same time, you can click new window to open the new project in a separate window. Or if you simply want to close the current one and open the new one, you can click the this window button. So you can see here that we now have a new project created in the folder we selected. It's got an account class in it and you can see the source code for that class here. And if I double click account test, this is the class with the main method in it. So you can see the main method here as well. Now, another way to run an application in this IDE is to right click the class that contains main and select the run method, uh, the run option rather. So when I do that, it's going to go ahead and build the program. Uh, if you get this in Windows, uh, you can simply click allow access. It's just asking if you can run that program. And now you can see down in the bottom here, this is an interactive program and it's waiting for me to enter a name. So if I click down here and type Paul, you can see my input and hit enter to interact with the program and it completes the execution of the program at that point. So you're going to be interacting with your console command line style applications down here at the bottom of the IDE. The last piece in this video is to create a completely new project. And to do that, you'll either select new project from the file menu, or if you're first launching the IDE for the first time during a given day, you'll have the previous window that we showed you that allows you to create a new project, import a project, configure the IDE, etc. And you can click new project in that window as well. So when I select new project, I'm presented with the new project dialog. I want to create a Java application, so I'll leave Java selected and click next. And for this example, we're going to create a project from a template that's called a command line app. And what the IDE will do for you in this case is configure a project that is capable of uh, being used to create a Java application. And that application will contain one class, which in turn will contain the main method that's the starting point for the application. So I'll leave that selected and click next. I can then go ahead and change the project name to whatever I want. I'll call this one test just for argument's sake. And it's going to put it wherever you were last working. So uh, if you want to change that, you can click the ellipsis button. And by the way, by default, the IntelliJ IDE in your user directory is going to create a folder for IntelliJ projects. It's called Idea Projects. So if you want the projects to be stored there, you can go ahead and locate that and select it, or you can place them wherever you want on your system. And I'll go ahead and add test back to the end of this here. So the project name test should be stored in a folder called test. And by the way, if you then create another new project in the future, when it says untitled here, it will also say untitled here by default. And then you'll be able to change the project name and it will change the folder name within idea projects for you as well. Again, if project SDK is empty for any reason, you'll need to click new in this dialog and select JDK to specify where to find the JDK here. It already knows that I want to use JDK eight, uh, which is Java 1.8. And then finally, the base package option, I'm going to remove that for the um, purposes of the examples that we present in most of our chapters and videos. Uh, we do that for simplicity. In general, when you're creating industrial strength programs, you'll want to place every class you create into a so-called package. And we discuss those concepts in higher end chapters and lessons of our videos. So we'll leave that empty for now and click finish. At this point, 
uh, you, it's going to ask you if you want to create that folder and I'm going to click OK to say yes and we'll open this new project in this window. Now you can see that it creates the test project within that is a source folder that contains the main class and you can see that main class here over on the right side. By default the IDE produces curly braces in a location that's different from where I like to put them so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to drop each opening curly brace to the next line and let's go ahead and just write one line of code here uh, that's going to display welcome to Java. So as you start typing in the IDE it's going to help you write your code. It displays this window in which you can select um, based on the context what you want to enter. So I'm going to be using an object called system.out in this case to print something. So system.out dot is going to then display all of the different methods I can use on the out object and as I start typing print you'll notice it narrows down the list to only items that start with what I've typed so far and in fact I'll be using print ln which stands for print a line of text and when I enter the opening left parenthesis it automatically inserts the closing right one when I type a double quote character for a string it automatically inserts the closing double quote character so I can immediately start typing welcome to Java and I'll put an exclamation point on that and notice there's a little red squiggly here because I haven't finished this statement it needs a semicolon so as you're typing the code the IDE is compiling it in the background so that it can help you with syntax and other compilation errors so I'll go ahead and click after that and put in my semicolon to complete that statement at this point I can either right click main or click the play button up on the toolbar or select run uh, and then run main to execute this program it will build the project and then execute it down here in the bottom of the IDE. At this point you're now ready to begin using this IDE with our books Java How to Program 10th Edition and Java SE8 for Programmers or with our Java Fundamentals Live Lessons videos.